Good morning, and welcome to paper tube number three, my third episode of How Exciting. Um, I've just snuck in here um, while the baby is taking a nap, his uh, early morning nap. Make sure he's still napping. Doesn't look good. I figure we have maybe three seconds. We're lucky, three minutes. All right. Well, <clears throat> continue to get a lot of good feedback on my videos. Thank you so much um, for those who are uh, helping me out. So this morning, I thought while I'm unboxing, I'd like to go ahead and um, do a, another quilt project, demo another quilt project. Um, and this time I've been watching this series called The Great American Bake Off based off the Great British Bake Off which is a lot of fun to watch. Um, but this one challenge they had last night was to make a showstopper out of cookies. Uh, it had to be a winter or Christmas landscape. And one of the girls made a large mountain out of cookies. And it was really pretty the way she iced it. So I thought, hmm, that's what I want to do. Because I'm not the best at um, graphic design, I usually like to find a picture or something that I really like um, and use that as the base, um, freehand looking at it, trying to kind of mimic the outline, and then I get really excited um, for the creative process of putting things on top of each other and really bringing it to life and making it my own. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and first um, pick out an image, um, I'm going to Google it, pick out an image for a mountain, um, and then I will kind of use that uh, to draw and then quilt from there. Search is taking longer than I probably can afford with the baby taking its nap, so I'm going to go ahead and just freehand um, a, a mountain. I don't, I don't want it very big. I think I'm happier with that rough outline. It doesn't look as fake. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and cut this out with my funky scissors. Alright, got my core board out. I'm going to lift this up, sneak it on under. Now to find pins. I found the pins. Really cute little holder. Peacock design. Really proud of that. I also found one of my slotted tools. This one's a plastic base to it. Um, not my favorite. It's just too long. I don't want to hold all of it. Like the shorter ones I can hold up here. Um, found another one of these and also I found part of a paper ruler I really enjoyed um, having since I was uh, a beginner quiller but it's missing uh, there's a cross piece that you can snug up on any of the measurements which is really helpful and I think I've lost that forever sad okay so I'm going to pin into place my mountain so I'm going to pin into place my mountain. Oops, sorry. Right here. Okay. Um, and the next thing that I need is uh, to start finding papers to cut. 
I've decided instead of quilling directly on top of the plastic, I'm going to quill on top of um, a cutout of the design. So I'm taking the design I made and I am tracing it <clears throat> over top of a piece of scrapbook paper that I found and really liked and thought it would make really pretty background paper. A lot of uh, quilling is traditionally um, not done on top of a solid surface. It's usually made so you can see through it and then you can adhere it if you like to to like a card or something. Um, but I've seen this also trending. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it down for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the design I need. The paper I'm using is part of that um, scrapbook pad that has a core paper inside, so one of the plies is um, colored. That way, when you do your quilling, which you glue so that the paper stands up, you the viewer's eye will see a color. So one side's blue, one side's white, um, and if you can see it has snowflake texture onto it, which is really pretty. Can't tell if I want the blue side or the white side down. Hmm. Just think, think, think. I could do white, and then the quill quilling on top will be that blue. No, we'll do blue, and then the quilling on top will be white, and then we'll add glitter. I'm going to cut out a few long strips. I say I'm trying to make one eighth strips, but I think they turn out to be like one fourth inches strips. I'm sure I could measure. Why not? I've got a ruler with me. These are kind of thick. Nope. Closer to one fourth inch. Alright, I'll do one more for good measure. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting out strips that I'm going to use to outline around the design I've cut out. So now this is when the piece becomes really pin heavy. So I'm going to put pins in here. I'm not actually putting it through the paper, I'm just putting it strategically around the paper so that hopefully it won't move too much. Alright. Now I'm going to try to lay these. Around the piece. Go ahead and start putting glue around the outside edge of the piece that I have cut out. I guess I will keep. Well, some of you might be saying, Emma, you're starting on the wrong side. You're right. Didn't I want blue? I did, I wanted blue. I wonder if that'll still fit. There we go. It's okay, because I have plastic down that glue will pop right back up. Alright. Well, thank you for saying that if you said that out loud. Alright, now let's redo this. I'm going to put glue on the edges of this.
Now I'm going to go ahead and put one of the pieces on this. Kind of sneak it up under that pin. And lay it like that. Grab some pins to keep it up vertical. Alright. Looks good. Looks very good. Um, and whenever you make a curve, you will probably have to make um, a punch in your paper very close to the edge so that you can use it to pull around the piece of paper that you're edging alongside the design. Now I'm going to glue the other side of the mountain. I thought I'd continue from this angle. I'm going to glue along this edge. Continue edging my piece. I'm thinking of my friend Dora, um, a fellow crafter um, who attended the same craft group as I did, called our Thursday group. Anyone who does anything remotely crafty um, will come and will show and tell and share their progress and talk about their lives and things. And One of our friends she passed away last week, um, and it's an awful feeling because uh, we didn't know she was sick. She hadn't been coming for a few weeks, and we all feel kind of like crummy friends, but Dora was just a adventurer. I mean, she found a way to get to Cuba before they even chartered flights there, so... Um, I mean, she had done a 15K bike ride recently, so I, we just thought she was out and about and doing stuff and busy. But, um, you know. So I'll just continue going around the mountain, putting pins strategically here and there. Mm, I see the baby's waking up. I went and got my little friend, and he woke up. He woke up, didn't you, buddy? Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and um, finish outlining that piece, um, just so that we don't have wasted all of that glue that Mommy poured out. Okay. Then we're going to go play with this little man, because he's the real reason I, I do anything. He's my real job. See you soon. We're right at the end of outlining and I have two pieces, one from this side and one from that side. Um, and to affix that I'm just going to put glue on one of the tails and I'm going to obviously glue it to the other piece and it's going to stay there um, as I snug it and wedge it in between that piece and a pin. Just in case you're wondering. It's pin heavy, this part of the craft. So here we are, we're done. Me and Ollie are gonna go do Ollie business until the next nap. Here we go. So we will let that dry like so. Mmm, gotta turn it upside down. I can see that needs to be pinned. Do it. Ta da! Alright, while well, that's drying, there we go. Probably take about 10 minutes to dry. Hi, we ended up having a very busy Ollie day yesterday, and so I was not able to get back and work on my quilling. Um, but here I am at the end of the following day, and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't. 
I'd get some progress done on that mountain. I'm going to go ahead and outline the snowy peaks the same way I outlined the rest of the piece. And as I go ahead and fill in this empty space with quilled pieces, it will go ahead and strengthen this outline as well as the one in the middle so that it won't be so flimsy and it'll stand up pretty sturdy. So at this point I'm very happy with what I have. I think it's going to look very pretty filled in with some quilt pieces. So now I'm going to take my 1 8 strips and I'm going to cut them into 2 inch sections and I will quilt each one of them into a spiral like I showed before and then we will glue the end and mold it into a marquee and we'll fill these in with traditional marquee shapes. I have my pile of two inch um, strips. There are two or six, eight, two, two, maybe about 16 of them here. Um, I think they will be more than enough to actually fill this when they um, become their spirals and expand. I've got a quilling tool here. Um, I think I showed this earlier, plastic handle, slot tool at top. Not my most favorite tool, but I'm um, we'll use it because it's the only one I know of um, that I have around. <clears throat> this kind of paper uh, that is thick cardstock um, is too thick to fit through the slot tool without first um, pounding out the edges. So I'll show you how to do that. I ended up needing to cut at least four times as many of those little coils, um, so I'll go ahead and get rolling on those. Here are my finished little swirls. Um, they're not glued yet. I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the tails and press them onto the rest of the swirl. So as I glue the tails down, I am squishing this into a marquee shape. Taking my spiral, I'm adding glue to the end. I'm pressing it. squishing it into a marquee. Well, this is day four, I think, of attempting to get away for a little bit, escape to my crafts. Um, <clears throat> I think we're in the middle of a tutorial. <laughs> I wish I could edit it so that it was flowing beautifully, but n no can do. Ollie finally um, went to sleep for this morning, um, so I'm going to hurry up and see what I can get done. Uh, the more I am uh, making in terms of uh, the marquees for the mountain, the more I see that I'm probably going to need to do 
maybe six or seven times the amount of pieces that I started off with. So I think I'll finish up making this batch of marquees and then I'll go ahead um, and cut some more, glue the tails and pinch them into shape and I'll let you know uh, what the end number is. So in total, I have 47 spirals, and I'm going to start filling in the mountain. So now I'm just taking the pieces, and I am dipping them in glue, just one edge, sticking them alongside the bottom of the piece. So one side of the quilt piece is going to glue itself to the border, and the other side will glue itself to the piece beside it. So here you can see where the 47 spirals were glued, and you can see the glue is still drying. Um, I clearly have a lot more of the mountain to fill in. So I'm probably going to make 50 more, at least, of these to put in here and there. But I'm really enjoying this. My first big quilt project since Ollie was born. Hope you're enjoying it. As I finish cutting uh, what I hope is the last 50 um, spirals for my piece, I want to go ahead and wrap at least this episode of Paper Tube up, my third episode. Um, and I'll go ahead and for episode four continue and hopefully finish it. Uh, I've been having uh, ideas of how to glitter it at the end uh, and possibly list it on my Etsy um, shop if I decide to reopen that. So. This has been quite stimulating and exciting, um, and I think I only have 15 minutes left really before um, Ollie's going to wake up again, and I need to go uh, settle him, but this is so enjoyable. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Paper Tube. I hope you enjoy your week.